Hi, it's David Comatoy, and welcome to Vlog This. This is a very special episode of Vlog This. Um, we're back, by the way, and joining me in the studio is Kevin Fulton from KUSI Television here in San Diego. In studio, Kevin, welcome to the show, sir. There you go. I wanted to dress like David Comatoy, so I put away the other clothes and, uh, and <laughs> with David, Kevin, David, Kevin, David. There you go. No, I thought I'd dress like you tonight. Mutual Admiration Society. There you go. Kevin Fulton in the studio. We've done radio, we've done TV. Um, uh, tell us why you're here tonight. Well, you know, I, I've discovered a piece of San Diego trivia that most people don't know. Um, watch this. You'll remember one of the most famous television show openings ever. Watch this. Here we come, walking down the street. We get funniest looks from everyone we meet. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys, and people say we monkey around. But we're too busy singing to put anybody down. Now, what you don't know about that, David, wow. is that that was actually shot right here in San Diego at the Hotel Del Coronado. Right here in Coronado. Right here. We didn't know this at the time, but we actually, on New Year's Eve, got one of the last interviews with Davy Jones. Yeah, he was here in San Diego uh, for one of his last concerts, uh, New Year's Eve 2012. So, uh, beginning of January, we got to sit down with him, kind of walk through his career, walk through his life, and uh, who knew a month later he was gone. Uh, but one of the things that I really discovered uh, about him is he really is a guy who says, follow your dreams, no matter what they are, follow your dreams. I guess you could really say he really is a daydream believer. Their TV show is still watched, uh, Emmy Award winning TV show, uh, gold records, concerts sold out all over the world, and even at one point in time have become a trivia uh, 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 question because he's become a true American icon. Of course, we're talking about Davy Jones, uh, who's joining us today. Just came off the morning show live with uh, Tom and Bridget. First of all, Davy, welcome to San Diego. Hey, Thank thanks. You for being nice here. to be here. What hey, so it? the the opening of the monkeys. Everybody remembers the the opening where you're running in the sand to the ocean and come back, and that actually happened right here in San Diego. It certainly did, right outside the Del Mar uh, um, Hotel Del Coronado, you know? Yeah, that was, we came down to film. It was a place we could all be, you know, housed, and, and obviously um, uh, the pilot worked because the show went to 36 countries around the world. You know, we, they sold upwards of 100 million records, I'm told, and um, um, it still shows in different parts of, uh, of the world, to, even today, in different languages, of course. Oh, man, and, so. and, you know, it was so popular, and then it came back and was even as popular the second time around, and, and it's still running today, you know. You know, it, it's interesting, because it, it, it's never really left my front doorstep. Right. In, in, you know, when I go places, you know, people, you know, talk to me as if it was yesterday. Yeah. But I think we're all looking for those happy memories. The songs were written by Carol King and Neil Diamond, Sadaka, Harry Nielsen, Tommy Boyce, Bobby Hart, Lieber and Stoller, yeah, right. Barry Mann, Cynthia Wilde. So, you know, all these all these people have gone on and ha are recognized as people that have, have had success in the business. And we all know, I mean, it's very difficult, no matter what business you are in, to be sustaining that kind of success, whether it be, you know, the gardening, whether it be the fashion, whether it be the, you know, the TV personality. You've got to be so, sort of dedicated for that up and that down and find a little kind of place on the side of that fishbowl, oh, which, which makes you comfortable. Well, you know, and, and that's kind of why you've been such a well-rounded performer, because originally you were playing Oliver on Broadway, and then you actually became the very first monkey. So... You you, you do a lot of things other than just the money. Yeah, I was in Oliver. I played the Artful Dodger, and I've gone on since to be able to play the 
part of... In fact, my daughter said, Dad, it's about time you acted your age. <laughs> so I'm talking like this, my dear Oliver, my boy, come over here, you know. Being Fagin, the, the, the character. So and it's interesting uh, being an actor um, or being a musician or, or just being a personality, someone that's recognisable. You know, you get kind of typecast and put into a little can over here or wherever it might be, but it's up to the individual. So anybody out there that's got any uh, ambitions to to be in the business nobody does what you do and if you want to change things you change it I can't say the monkeys ruined my acting career all I can say is change that by doing more you know I can you know give me a chance to be somebody else you know what I'm saying <laughs> you know and um, so you know um, I probably do the worst Jackie Mason you've ever heard in your life, but I'm telling you now, it's nice to see you. You know, <laughs> but, but, you, know it's Jackie Mason. <laughs> you know, so I, I incorporate all these things into my day, my there personality. I take what I have here onto the stage as a personal, you know, person that people are, in, it's impressionable to people and people feel comfortable. The first thing I do when I come out onto a stage is I talk to the audience. And I, it's something that I didn't get for many years, and now I realize they want to hear you talk about stuff. They want As the we did on the TV program this morning, talking about the horses, talking about the theater, talking about you know the benefit that we were a part of on New Year's Eve. And it's very diff difficult to put your finger on how success is to be sustained. So, uh, there's a famous man called Booker T. Washington, and he said, success is not to be measured by the position you reach in life, but by the obstacles you overcome to reach that success. So you really don't know, Kevin, what I'm doing during the day, or you don't know how I put my head on the pillow at night and how I feel. And there are certain things that you have to, you know, sacrifice to be an entertainer. It's, you know, you know, time away from family. It, it's time away from friends. It's obviously meeting new friends and going right. to places and being able to embellish your life with occasions. But I am, to me, it's no different than the school play. I, I don't feel any different than I ever did, and I can't believe I just had my 66th birthday. Oh, man. And I'm going to say myself, you know, this is not right. And I, I think some we need to reconstruct the whole system of how we age. I just saw... Um, um, Brad Pitt last night in a movie where he started out old and oh, he became yeah, yeah, younger, yeah, younger, yeah, younger, yeah, younger, younger, yeah. younger. Um, you know, that's a cliche. And in a sense, it's something we've talked about many, many times. You know, hey, if only I knew then yeah, what yeah, I know yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Well, they made a movie about yeah, it. Yeah. So any idea you have about making movies and doing things, just make sure you get it done because somebody else is thinking about the same idea at the same time. I've written a musical. It's called The Call. It's um, set in England just before the Second World War. It's traditional. It's none of your stomping and banging and it's Hello Dolly, it's Showboat, it's oh, Funny wow. Girl, it's Oliver, it's My Fair Lady, it's West Side Story. It's a musical with great songs and everybody will recognize these songs once they're played again at another time somewhere else. Very rarely you see shows these days where there's only, maybe there's one song that you remember, you know, um, you know the song that Celine Dion sings from the Titanic, you know, right. or maybe there's a song out of Godspell or maybe the song out of Hello Dolly, well hello Dolly, we know that, okay. Well, it's very difficult to be able to put into a musical 10, 12, 15 songs, but we've done it. And I can honestly tell you, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't speak about it because it's a project I'm involved in if I didn't believe what I was saying was true. And it is true. We have a musical that's been written. It's been written by my friend and I, Chris Andrews, who became the Artful Dodger after me in okay. Oliver, in London and on Broadway. Now, so is, that, is that a play that you'll be bringing it's, in it's, the next it's, year? Too? It's a musical that's going to be out in the next couple of years, something that's going to be, hopefully, international. And it's, the songs have been written, the script has been written, and now it needs to be presented. It needs to be presented because, as we know, you know, in the business, to put on a musical or to put on a show these days, you know, just ask Rosie O'Donnell, right. just ask Paul Simon. Right. You're talking millions and millions and millions and millions. I don't have millions and millions and millions, so I have to then go co-produce or go to somebody that's going to be able to, you know, put this into the public arena. Right. It's very difficult show business, you know, it, you can't be afraid, you know, you know, success is never final, failure is never fatal, it's courage, you've got to be courageous in the business, and all I can say is, you know, my dad said, son, nobody does what you do 
And that's the only thing that's able to get me through because I don't sing like Tony Bennett. I don't, you know, act like, you know, you know, sort of Jack Nicholson. I, there's, there's certain things that you can't, you know, do, but there are a lot of things that you can do. And there's a lot of things that other people can't do that you do. So never give up your dream. And that would be the, you know, um, and never give up your youth. We invite you to blog this. We'll be right back. Are you a restaurant, bar, or tavern owner? Are you renting and you want to buy? Do you own and want to expand? Is there an ideal property available that would allow you to open up a second or third location? Consider an SBA guaranteed loan. Here are the quick facts. The 7A loan maximum has been raised from $2 million to $5 million. The 504 loan has been raised from $2 million to $5 million. Imagine the ability to expand your business with an SBA guaranteed loan. Craig G. Francis originally worked for the SBA and then saw a need for the entrepreneur to have someone on their side who spoke the language of banking and could facilitate the deal. Craig G. Francis, SBA loan broker. Craig has been helping businesses for over 25 years, helping place over 2,500 loans for over $1 billion total. This is the guy you want on your team. Craig has the experience in established relationships with banks and bankers. Craig G. Francis. Before the Monkees, one of the biggest nights that everybody talks about is the Ed Sullivan Show when the Beatles were there. You actually were on that show, but not as the Monkees, as Davy Jones. Tell us about, about that experience. The Ed Sullivan Show, you know, that was like Bye Bye Birdie. We're going to be on Ed Sullivan, Ed Sullivan. I'd do anything for you, dear, anything for you, mean everything to me. I know that I'd go anywhere. You know, it was one of the only really true national, international um, um, variety shows. So if you got on the Ed Sullivan show, goodness gracious, that was very prestigious. And people from all over the country were looking at you. It wasn't regional, it was national. And so when we were told that we were going to do a segment from Oliver on that show, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. But as I say, getting back to the idea, it's no different than the school play. The bonus was the Beatles were on the same show. They sang six songs on the show. And I looked at Paul McCartney, and I, I looked at the guys, and Ringo, um, who's become a friend over the years, and John, and Paul, and George, and I went, wow, man, this is like, and they're having a good time doing it. So I actually was satisfied with the 12 people outside the stage door of Oliver who wanted autographs. I was satisfied with the standing ovation the cast got of Oliver. But when I saw this, it opened new door. You see, you, you've got to keep a naivety in, in the business as well. 
because otherwise you get a reputation of being somebody that you're really not. You can't act at being yourself. You can't act at being, I can't act at being David Jones. This is David Jones. I'm sorry. There you go. You know, maybe I talk too much. Maybe I don't talk <laughs> enough. Maybe I don't laugh enough. Maybe I cry too much. But all those things are things that you incorporate into your personality. And that's what endears. I think once you get yourself into a happy, there's no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. That you, once you get yourself into a, a place where you can cope with yourself, then you're able to project that image and that personality and that feeling to the audience. And the audience is the general public. You know, and, and just as I say, never give up your dream. I haven't even begun. You, you're you're a, a philosopher. I didn't even realize. I mean, never give up on your dreams. And happiness is the way to happiness. That does are energy is eternal delight. Those are bumper stickers, right yeah, there. Yeah, I know. It's uh, like, and then I have the T-shirt that says, "Davey knows your mother." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You, hey, uh, uh, it must have been kind of fun for you. Uh, years later, it's been well documented that that you guys all became friends with the Beatles, and that's when they said, "Well, you guys are more like the Marx Brothers." That must have been kind of fun to hang out with him afterwards. Well, you know, the thing about that was to have that endorsement of John Lennon saying a thing like yeah. that. It was never in competition. The idea of getting a phone call from Paul McCartney in, in the early days saying, can you send some pictures and records for my daughter? She's a big fan. And now she's a fashion icon in Paris, yeah. you know. So all these things touch your life. And for the Beatles to even, you know, even consider us or even to recognize us. But there are many, many other artists throughout the decade, decades gone by, that have said they wouldn't be in music if it wasn't for the monkeys. Oh, uh, uh, and, and I've mentioned the songwriters, and I've mentioned the... It's about hitting at the right time. Yeah. And, you know, ha having watched the TV show this morning, the thing that bothers me about news programs is that I am a very early riser and I watch the news to see what's going on in the world. So it affects me and during my day as to what is happening to other people, you know. Um, and so to see a show where it's morning time and we've got the fashion, we've got the happiness, we've got the outside, we've got the inside, we've got the outside broadcast, this is refreshing. But you know, don't let the truth spoil the news is a motto, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, and we keep pumping the bad. There's more good in the world than there is bad. And to be able to incorporate within the daily news something that of interest that might say, oh, well, that's a nice look. Maybe I'll, I'll consider adding that to my wardrobe or I don't really know it's yeah. not like uh, uh, yeah. it's not like Victoria uh, secret fashion show I mean <laughs> you see it but you never see it again yeah. you know what I mean but you you, you see and I, th I think I if you if you're doing this every day then it must be empowering yeah. you must be feeling very good about things even though I know you're gonna be going home as a producer and at night think now okay now tomorrow this is what we're gonna <laughs> do and it never stops it never stops there's no such thing as as a day off when you're in in the business and you, you know having had the success um with the monkeys obviously my voice is recognizable and my my Face. well uh, not so much anymore because you know I, I um i'm a little older but you know um i think that you know if you can cope with that once you leave the house i've heard horror stories about entertainers once you leave the house you become that person if you don't want to be that person go get another job yeah you know, you, there's so much bad behavior. And, you know, I wish that um, I could have, you know, maybe met and spend a little time with, with Elvis or Kurt Cobain or, or with, with, with Jim, well, Jimmy was our opening act on the yeah, yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, or, or, you know, Charlie Sheen, Lindsay Lohan, these people, they just need a little conversation, a little friend. Hey, let's go for a walk. Let's go to the zoo. Let's go and have a soda. Let's have a cup of coffee and I'll chat about certain things, you know, with you. I'm not a philosopher other than trying to direct myself in the right direction so if, when I talk about this stuff it's only because I want to find answers for myself well you are a great philosopher well I, we're in San Diego and I, I would be crazy not to ask you about the horse racing because Del Mar is such a big deal with us here uh, you've had some experience in Del Mar uh, talk about your horses you know I have, I have race horses it was the thing that I did when I left school as a 14 year old 14 years old I left school and I went to Newmark in England which is like the Kentucky it was like you know the big racing capital I met, you know, some different people um, uh, that, you know, said to me, hey, jockey life is great, but, you know, continue with the showbiz because I'd done that since I was 11, 12, 13, 14, radio, television. So I um, 
had it in my blood ever since and I've o I own horses now I breed horses now you know I, I, you say that but you know I've got two-year-old horses and a 12-year-old car you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's not cheap you know and I do this because it's my business it is my job you know I mean it's you know my brother-in-law said to me years ago how much is enough it's not about having a lot of money or making a lot of money it's about paying as you play you know what I mean so that's what I do I mean um, I took the horses to um, a Del Mar racetrack a couple of seasons ago and ran in the 67th running of the Del Mar Handicap, a horse called Indian Town Jones. And the biggest thrill was on the, uh, on the shed row when the, the neighbor, after I'd given his son some carrots, came over and shook my hand and said, thank you very much. And when I took it away, he had to put a $20 bill in my hand. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, you know what I mean? There was no Davy Jones from the Monkees. You know, there, was no, there was no sort of celebrity. I was one of the boys on the shed row. And that's it. That was the secret for me, unknown and anonymous. I have some nice horses for next season. We're right next to Gulfstream Racetrack. They only run through, um, I think, uh, April, um, maybe the end of February, March is when we run. But there's Calder, we have Tampa, and then, you know, I've had races uh, up at De uh, Delaware Park, I've run at Indiana Downs, I've run in Keeneland, uh, Churchill Downs. But, you know, it, it's, it's, um, it's not about dollars and cents when it comes to the horses. It, to me, it's my passion. I still ride, I ride all the time. I ride race horses around the track and, and exercise and look after horses. It's a, it's a daily routine. I just want to beat everybody. You know, you can't beat them. I can't be beaten, you know, sort of, you know, a man of war quality horse, you know, because it's worth millions with my $30,000 horse, but I try. But also, I like to check out my wife, a fabulous dancer, great actress, beautiful woman. She's the backbone of what's going on for my life right now, and she's, um, she's somebody that um, hopefully will be able to direct me and help me in, in the years to come, you know? There you go. Davey, from one producer to another, thanks for being here. What I'm going to take away for this is so much more than uh, award-winning television show, monkeys, concerts all over the world, jockey. I'm going to come away with happiness is the way to happiness and never give up on your dream. Never give up your dream, you know. Always try. You can't win if you don't get in the game. I mean, you're an outstanding person on and off camera. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I know you. And thanks for spending so much time with us here this morning. Well, I'm glad. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for the invite. I hope, hope I can see you again. When Davey left San Diego, he actually was on his way home to prepare for a new tour, an oldies tour, with Paul Revere and the Raiders and the Monkees. As it turns out, this was one of his last concerts. This was one of his last interviews. And in the words of Davy Jones, we say, follow your dreams. We invite you to blog this, and tonight, I'm Davy Kamatoy. Good night. Hey, Davy, jockeys aren't big guys, are they? No, uh, anyway. uh, five, about 5'3". Five, the yeah. girls like that size, or what? Well, you know. You well, want well, trouble adjusting boots, uh, <laughs> In boots, I'm 5'3". Yeah, uh, no, I don't get to have trouble adjusting. I kind of like tall girls, yeah. Uh, it's kind of groovy, but... Well, no, I didn't ask you that, David. <laughs> yeah. I asked you whether or not they liked you. <laughs> you haven't got any hair on your face. No, there's a funny bit. I went into hospital, had my appendix out, you see. And I go into the hospital, and she says, okay, shaving time. All right, David. I said, I, said, I don't... Haven't <laughs> hey, you got any clean thoughts? You look like such a clean kid. I am a clean kid. You know, they may put my hair over my ears and all this. I'm really a clean-cut kid, you know. Yeah. And uh, they made me do this. Take off the hat. We don't want to see what the hair looks like. Doesn't what, look great. Hey, Davey, let me ask you, what bag are you in? What, what? What bag are you in? Bag? Yeah. I don't get that. All right, let me ask you something. I mean, like, do you make a folk sound or a rock sound or anything like that? I make a terrible sound. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me no. do the song and dance you do. Song and dance yeah, I do? Cartwheel something. Do something, quick. A song and... You must be joking. No, I'm not. What, do you, want, what do you want me to do? I, Sing? I dance one of your little quick things. <laughs> hey, Davey, you want to know something? Honestly, hold it for a second. What? I really think you should have been a jockey. <laughs>
Introducing Toilet Guardian, the Eco Smart Valve that saves water and eliminates overflows. Overflows can be more than annoying. Unattended, they can cause major damage. What if you own multiple properties, houses, apartments, commercial property? That's thousands of dollars of damage from overflowing toilets. Toilet Guardian solves this problem. The Eco Smart Valve that saves water and eliminates overflows. Turning your toilet into a smart device. Did you know that one out of every five toilets leak? Sometimes that leak is silent, resulting in 30 to 500 gallons a day wasted per leaky toilet. That's millions of gallons of drinking water wasted because of leaking toilets. The Toilet Guardian stops silent leaks. Protect your home, protect your investments. Save water, save money. In just eight easy steps, the Toilet Guardian installs in minutes, not hours. The Eco Smart Valve saves water, money, and eliminates overflows. For more information, visit us online at aquaone.com or give us a call at 714-898-7016. La Jolla Painting has been in business for 32 years. Our philosophy is to give customers the best value for their money. We do a mixture of commercial and residential. I would, it used to be 50-50, but now it's about 80-20, uh, 80% being re the residential work. We did the interior and the exterior of the, of the building. Uh, the interior, we did uh, a lot of it off of lifts because it's very high. On the exterior, we put special coatings on there, uh, anti-graffiti coatings to protect the blocks from graffiti. Uh, we also did the theater, which was very high work, doing the woodwork underneath the eaves. So I always tell them uh, the types of paints that I'm gonna be using, I put that right into the contract. I explain the difference between a quality paint and a cheaper brand. I give the, the owner a choice of what they want to go with, but always, almost always, it's going to be the highest quality paints. But for us, the customer is always number one. We're looking out for their best interest, and we don't want to extend any job out, so we try to give them the least inconvenience and stress and get the job done as soon as possible, maintaining a quality all the way throughout the job from the beginning to the end. Your reputation is everything. People look at that and then they, they want you to give them the bid, they want to check out your references to see how reliable you are, but that gets your foot in the door. Even with the uh, general contractors that do big jobs, because of your reputation they want to uh, do business with you.